sorry to the rest of the participants to arrive and then let's just jump right into it. Yeah, sure, I'm waiting. No problem. Okay, wonderful. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to our uh, talk today. Welcome to the Cybersecurity Student Association of the Sciences Po. One more time, one time more. We are very honored to welcome all of you here today uh, to our talk today on Russia's active measures and the Georgian cyber strategy. As we announced earlier, we are featuring today Mr. Andrea Gozirice. Welcome, Mr. Gozirice. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. Um, Mr. Gozirice held so far several positions in the Georgian uh, Ministry of Defense and the Intelligence Services. He was the director of the Military uh, Ministry of Defense's Cybersecurity Bureau, its Inspector General, and the founder of the Georgian Cybersecurity Studies and Education Center. So I'm uh, quite sure you will learn a lot from you today, Mr. Gutsuritz, once again, thanking you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Berenike Falmer. I'm the president and co-founder of the CSA. So please don't hesitate throughout the talk and also in the end to post your questions and answers. You know the format by now. There is the question and answers um, field down in the chat there. So please go forward with everything you would like to ask, also concerning obviously the Cybersecurity Association. Um, without further ado, I will leave the floor to Mr. Goderitze, who will introduce himself obviously a bit more in depth and will talk then, uh, yes, exactly, thank you, about Russia's active measure and the Georgian cyber strategy. Over to you and thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Uh... Mrs. Fulmer for the kind introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor to speak to you today. Let me express my, my deepest gratitude to the Cybersecurity Association, to Mrs. Fulmer, to Mrs. Christina Samandel. I'm not sure that I was perfect with pronunciation for her sure name, but I am sure that my name is more difficult for European people. So my surnames uh, pronunciation. I'd like 
quickly introduce myself. My name is Andro Gotsiridze. Until 2017, I served as a director of Cybersecurity Bureau, Ministry of Defense, Georgia. And before I have had the privilege to be Inspector General at the MOD and the head of Military Intelligence Service Department, Military Intelligence Department. And it's my pleasure to share with you our experience for Georgian side about Russian threat, about cyber defense, cyber security, and cyber threat landscape. Uh, so when I started preparing this talk, I was reminded by Georgia's good friend, Lithuanian president uh, Vitautas Landsbergis quote, that Russia is not a part of Europe as cancer is not a part of human body. And I have to be Russocentric today because Russia is most difficult and the most dangerous enemies of Georgian state. What I would like to share with you is a short presentation about Georgia's experience in cyber uh, uh, and Georgia's cyber agenda. First, I am going to present the landscape of cyber threats. Then I will share with you the overview of Russia's destructive cyber activities. And finally, I will discuss with you the factors that need to be taken into account when formulating a new national cybersecurity strategy. Let me uh, speak uh, a few words about the cyber as the fifth domain of confrontation. What is uh, Georgia's view about cyber? Uh, over the past two decades, cybersecurity is becoming more and more important as a part of national security, and political, military, social, and criminal processes have mostly migrated to cyberspace. That means that uh, the cyber domain is constantly used for reaching political, economic, or military goals, and the well-developed cyber attack potential enables many states, especially for us, Russia, to successfully use cyberspace during wars, conflict on peacetime, to obtain geopolitical superiority. The cyber has established itself as a fifth domain of confrontation, apart from the air, land, sea, and space. This is the reality of contemporary of modern world. The usage of cyber in interstate relations and conflicts is significantly uh, transformed in a short period of time. If the cyber attacks in the first decade of the center century were mostly oriented to agile technical effects, such attacks have mainly made way to cyber operations performed for informational uh, psychological influence for the middle of the uh, second decade, this century. So cyber operations today are successfully used for changing the perceptions of a target actor through open or covert channels. A number of states already have offensive cyber capabilities. The cyber today has already become an important part of any war, conflict, or confrontation. Uh, Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, uh, destructive actors successfully developed its offensive cyber capabilities. As former US Secretary Pompeo mentioned, Huawei and other Chinese state-backed tech companies are the Trojan horses of Chinese intelligence. Russia's disinformation campaigns try to turn our citizen against one another and Iranian cyber attacks pledge Middle East computer networks. The Kremlin considers Georgia to be within its sphere of influence, which is why our country is a target for Russian hybrid warfare. For Georgia, as an object of uh, Russia's constant interest, securing the cyberspace therefore is a priority field. Uh, the increasing uh, usage of cyber operations during uh, conflicts with Estonia, Georgia, and Ukraine personifies the recent Russian activities as successful examples of the strategic integration of informational operation or, or cyber attacks with conventional military operations. 
the cyber attack against Estonia in 2007 was a punitive operation for the bronze soldier and the political message and was aimed to provoke public unrest and mass disorder and was the first attempt at using cyber to influence political processes. The following year, the use of cyber operations in the Russo-Georgia war was a well-organized complementary process to conventional military actions, aiming at creating an information vacuum, spreading disinformation and closing the channels of international support for Georgia. In the war with Ukraine, the Russian cyber attack had developed even further and apart from traditional results, Russia managed to utilize the capacities of large telecommunication companies in order to uh, secretly eavesdrop on their clients, determine their locations. Later, this information was used for psychological influence and for the determination of location for artillery strikes. In addition, for the first time, Russia state-backed cyber actors disabled part of the Ukrainian energy system. Later, Russia's destructive cyber activities have left the post-Soviet area and hackers connected with Russian government structures targeted election processes in Europe and, and, and in the United States. Uh, the usage of cyber attacks in an armed conflict originates from the 2008 Rus Russia-Georgian war and a mass cyber attack undertaken parallel to ongoing, ongoing military operations is the first precedent of the usage of cyberspace in armed conflicts. The usage of cyber elements such as defacement or distributive denial of services, DDoS attacks in the 2008 was a direct and well-organized accompanying process to conventional action, aiming to simplify the implementation of military tasks for the Russian armed forces, create an informational vacuum, gain informational superiority and establish the uh, Russian narrative about the conflicts. Due to Georgia's starkly pro-Western policies, the Kremlin started preparing a military operation in about 2006-2007, and the formulation of the mechanisms and the scenario for the cyber attack probably took place in the same period. It's important that the very first attack on Georgia cyberspace took place substantially earlier as compared to the launch of conventional operations. It was July uh, 20, when, 20th when the official website of the president of Georgia went offline for almost 24 hours as a result of uh, the DOS attack. In the same period, period, the Russian actors were constantly scanning Georgian communication systems. In August 2008, Russian Air Forces invaded Georgia, after which the main pace of cyber attack commenced. First of all, the websites of the president of Georgia, government of Georgia, ministry of foreign affairs, the parliament of Georgia as well, uh, as informational portals like Epsni G, News G, uh, and non-Georgian but Georgian-friendly media websites and forums came under came under attack on August 8th. TBC Bank, which was the largest commercial bank in Georgia at that time, was attacked on August 9th. A new wave of cyber attacks took place against the Parliament of Georgia and the President of Georgia on August uh, uh, 10th. Most of the governmental websites, excluding the, the one of President, were not functional on August 11th, and a defacement attack was undertaken on the President's website on the same day, placing, placing Nazi symbols on it, as well as photos uh, equating President Saakashvili with Hitler and with dictators of 20th centuries. Uh, similar attacks were, were under, 
taken against the websites of the National Bank and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Georgia, placing photos of uh, dictators there. It is important to note that those other websites that were co covering the conflict objectively, neutrally, or in Georgia's favor also suffered defacement attacks. The same was true for Russian opposition websites like Skandali.ru, like Kasparov.ru, or opposition party sites. The high level of coordination of the performed attacks with one another and also conventional attacks confirms that this was part of the single campaign. Uh, in certain cases, the cyber operations matched Russian conventional actions geographically as well. The disabling of informational and governmental websites processed aviation attacks. The government on Georgia that relied on its websites for uh, the disseminating information during the aggression was forced to look for a way to break the information blockade. Already on August 9th, the websites of the president of Georgia, as well as the broadcasting companies Rustawi 2, were transferred to the servers of Atlanta-based company. Uh, due to the fact that in 2008, Georgia was not highly dependent on information on ICT, the cyber attack uh, had no serious effect for the state. However, the Kremlin still managed to muffle the information channels and established a Russian narrative about the Russo-Georgian war. The 2008 attack on Georgia is considered to be the first case of a cyber attack undertaken parallel to ongoing military operation. Ladies and gentlemen, let me share a short overview, very quickly, a uh, short overview of Georgia's cyber ecosystem, legal and policy documents, and, uh, they are governing cybersecurity. Uh, cybersecurity has become a state priority after 2008. So, when the country has experienced a wide-scale cyber attack on its governmental as well as banking and media sector. Uh, the main legal framework for the cyber security is a law of information security uh, and uh, which established uh, which establish the stakeholders, main stakeholders in cybersecurity field for Georgia. Data Exchange Agency under the Ministry of Justice uh, covers e-governance, uh, data exchange infrastructure, and information security for public sector. Cybersecurity Bureau of the Ministry of Defense is responsible for cybersecurity of defense agencies and ministry of interior and the criminal police department covers the cyber crime investigation uh, and the other legal activities. Uh, on the international level in 2012, Georgia uh, ratified the convention of cyber crime, uh, Budapest convention, uh, which was developed by the Council of Europe. Uh, a little bit about strategy, cybersecurity strategy of Georgia. Georgia's first cybersecurity strategy and the action plan was developed in 2013. Uh, this document defines Georgian government policy on cybersecurity, reflecting the strategic goals and mind, mind, mind principles, as well as establishing action plans. The primary strategy goal is cooperation among state, uh, private and uh, uh, international organizations. Cybersecurity strategy involves five essential elements. Uh, first, research and analysis, a legal foundation, coordination uh, on an institutional level, interagency coordination, uh, awareness rising, and international cooperation. 
the second edition of cybersecurity strategy and action plan was developed at the 2015. It covers new projects and necessary events to provide cybersecurity and the new national cybersecurity strategy is still at the finalizing stage and uh, probably this work will last several months. Uh, uh, the high rate of private ownership, what is a problem in Georgia's ecosystem, in Georgia's uh, cyber agenda? Uh, the high rate of private ownership of critical information system, of critical infrastructure in Georgia makes close collab collaboration between private infrastructure operators and government security stakeholders crucial. And despite this exchange of information between domestic stakeholders stays formally um, unregulated. This is largely due to the fact that the law of information security identifies only public institutions as critical information uh, systems and therefore the private organizations, including ISPs, internet service providers, or banking sectors, on insurance sectors, on industry, are not obliged to cooperate or report cybersecurity incidents. I hope that this gap will be covered in the new edition of strategies on in the new edition of our cybersecurity law. Uh, let's discuss the Russian cyber threats and uh, its mine directions and all uh, for Georgia. Russia's destructive cyber operations continue to be the main threat uh, aimed at technical as well as psychological effects. Uh, they are rather dangerous for our country. And as of today, the cyber threat from Russia is real and compared to the cyber attacks of 2008, the level of cyber threats has grown owing to the several factors. And first, that Russia has not altered its aggressive cyber policy and even more, it's increased its offensive cyber capabilities. Second, uh, Russia extended the field of usage, usage of cyber operations in both directions, like information technical and information psychological uh, the effects directions. And third, Georgia's dependence on ICT is much higher now, which increases the scale of the expected damage. In 2008, uh, it was seven internet user per 100 citizen, and now it's about uh, 60 uh, active internet user per 100 citizen. In a democratic uh, state, the majority of critically important services are located in the private sector, and this is exactly why the businesses often ends up to be the victim of cyber attacks. Parallel to the you are increasing usage of cyberspace, the risks are growing proportionally as well. Unfortunately, uh, there is no immunity from cyber threats. From the uh, beginning of 21st century, uh, fields such as uh, state structures, media, and communications, industry, energy, political organizations, political processes like elections, uh, and other have become the target of Russian cyber operations of very, very difficulty and intensity in tens of countries and, of course, in Georgia. The analysis of development in uh, cyberspace for the past two decades and the usage of cyber elements in conflicts make it clear that the negative effects of the cyber operations conducted by Russia are diverse and, called, uh, and could serve different purposes. Uh, uh, compromising first uh, uh, effect is compromising supply chain and disabling industry control systems, IC, 
S means infiltration through a product supplier or flows in production or logistics. Recently, such infiltration has been frequently used by Russia. According to the US intelligence data, since at least 2015, uh, Russia has processed the ability to have remote access over the software controlling critical information systems of the adversary. According to the same data, cyber actors affiliated with Russia successfully managed to compromise the supply chain of the products of several vendors in a way that after download, downloading legal updates, legal updates, Russian malware was ending up in their user systems. Despite the fact that the use of ICS in Georgia is not frequent, the production cycle of large producers in the industry is still automated. One good example, ladies and gentlemen, for supply chain threats is the uh, very last solar winds attack. Uh, this was a classic uh, supply chain attack that these attackers gained access to solar winds, a company that markets network management software, so called. Orion to gain access to clients downstream in the supply chain. You probably have heard the idiom uh, hitting two birds with one stone. Uh, in Georgian, this is hitting two rabbits with one shoot. And well, this is uh, like hitting thousands of beards with one stone, this attack. Um, 18,000 companies, government agencies, military organizations, and commercial companies, including high-tech companies, were infected by using Orion software. The hackers embedded malicious code into routine updates that the clients downloaded and the attack was advanced and persistent, meaning that it avoided detection for months. Uh, uh, consequently, the solar winds breach resulted in massive subsequent breaches. The apparent objective was um, cyber espionage, uh, but uh, further research may uncover more uh, intentions, more uh, more intention in this cyber attack. U.S. intelligence agencies have pointed the finger of APT 29, uh, cozy bear linked to the SWR, Russian Foreign Intelligence Service, uh, and the to the FSB, Russian Domestic Intelligence Service. Uh, Federal Security Service. This group has been active over a decade and previously was involved during the 2016 US presidential election attacks. It also targeted the Norwegian intelligence agencies, Georgian uh, political and media sector, uh, Netherlands, and many more countries. The Russians have been mastering their supply chain attack skills for some time. In 2016, for example, they conducted another devastating supply chain attack, the Sandworm hacking group associated with the Russian military intelligence launched, uh, launched the NotPetya ransomware attack against financial institutions, government agencies, and energy firms. And I'm sure you are aware of this case. Uh, if back to the solar winds, just recently some new light has been shed in now appears that Russia was not alone and uh, Chinese hackers also exploited in different vulnerabilities in solar winds products, hitting the US Department of Agriculture or National Finance Center, etc. The second goal of Russian cyber attacks is maybe cyber espionage. Several years ago, Georgian agencies revealed a large-scale cyber espionage operation, uh, also known as a Georbot, 
According to the data in the report of US cybersecurity organization, FireEye, there was non-sanctioned access to the resources of government and law enforcement structures, offices of military uh, attaches, documentation regarding the relation between NATO and Georgia and other sensitive material for years. Various categories of information we are constantly outflowing through remotely installed malware. The operation was run by a hackers group controlled by the Russian special services uh, called APT-28, Fancy Bear, uh, later becoming a case of concern for the international community of multiple occasions. The aim of the organization is to gather information about the issues related to defense and geopolitics by using spy programs, which could only be interested in interesting to a state. APT-28, APT which has existed for at least uh, 2007, was in this case carrying out attacks for obtaining intelligence information in accordance with Russia's international interest. Uh, very important and very dangerous for Georgia's and uh, for international critical infrastructure is cyber attacks through sophisticated malware. In the Ukrainian conflict, Russia used the sophisticated malwares with kinetic effects like black energy or urobus on critical infrastructure. Such malware uh, was being prepared for almost 10 years and is highly difficult for an individ individual or a non-state actor to design. Um, uh, such actions create a feeling that during the future conflicts, Russia will not limit itself to, to, to low-tech defacement attacks and temporary disruptions of critical infrastructure, which is very dangerous for small countries, but for the industrial countries as well. Uh, next goal will be various levels of disruption or disablement of critical infrastructure functioning through uh, DDoS or defacement type attacks in terms of a weakly protected infrastructure, even low tech DDoS or defacement could result in disproportionately high damage. Uh, very important and very dangerous are insider threats for Georgia. One of the simplest way of gaining access to a system uh, is infiltration through an insider. Insiders are, are, are considered to be former or current employees, contractors, and uh, all subjects who could have legal access to information systems like vendors, etc. Recently, the renewed US cyber scandals connected to Russia were caused by insider threats like, Snow, like Snowden case or Kaspersky uh, case. Apart from motivated insider threats, insider cyber incidents caused by the low awareness of users are also, also very uh, important. Uh, for installing malware, Russian cyber actors often use a common met me method such as phishing. And in Georgia, the overall percentage of victims of phishing uh, is very high, which is very uh, problematic for our critical infrastructure, for our sensitive information, etc. It was through phishing, phishing that the networks of the US Democratic Party, German Bundestag, and other state institutions or businesses were compromised by cyber actors to the Russian special services during the cyber attacks against democracy, against electoral processes, and so on. Uh, no, very special and very uh, dangerous, very difficult to to mitigate is threats from uh, cyber operations with information psychological effect. Propaganda, connect, uh, propaganda content uh, uh, disseminated through cyber channels could cause an 
information psychological effect an altered perception in the Kremlin's for, 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 favor, the reduction of um, uh, pro-Western sentiments and the formation of the pro-Russian elite, which could be a prerequisite for conventional actions. Uh, one good example for cyber-enabled influence operation in order to undermine Georgia's sovereignty was the latest extensive Russian Baked cyber attack. Uh, on October, uh, on the end of October 2019, thousands of Georgian websites like government, courts, media, NGOs were defaced. Replacing their landing pages was electronic graffiti with images of former President Saakashvili with the words, I will be back. This was to turn our citizens one against another. This uh, was typically psychological attack influence operation. Uh, the attack was massive, but unsophisticated. It was low tech defacement attack. This also could be an intelligence by attack strategy, testing vulnerabilities, defenses and resilience of the country before parliamentary election 2020. We have to consider that even low tech defacement could result uh, as mentioned disproportionately high damage to weakly protected infrastructure. Uh, the implementation of cyber operations by Russia during uh, war or conflict, as well as peacetime, could be connected to addressing various strategic or tactic, ta tactical tasks, uh, like uh, uh, punitive measures for action inconsistent with Russia's interest or a leverage of pressure, pressure for performing political tasks. Uh, actions integrated with conventional attacks, with military attacks for simplifying the implementation of military goals, military uh, tasks, long-term disablement, uh, disablement of critical infrastructure through uh, cyber operation with kinetic effects in order to cause economic collapse, financial damage or mass disorder hindering the proper functioning of state institutions by limiting access to critical services, reducing pro-Western sentiments and altering perception in the Kremlin's favor, obtaining intelligence information, intelligence data, and so on, and so on, mining or fabrication of online data for discrediting uh, on blackmailing political figures, military, officials, social groups, and so on, and so on. For Georgia, given to the destructive and severely aggressive nature of its northern neighbor, this trend will be more or less dangerous. Special attention must be paid to documenting the intentions, capacities, or actions of Russia as a um, big cyber actor in the strategic documentation for cybersecurity. The new national strategy uh, and the legislation formulated on its basis must ensure the full integration of cybersecurity into all spheres, all uh, directions of wider security and, uh, and uh, state life. Uh, let me, ladies and gentlemen, short overview of the Russian cyber actors. The cyber units of uh, um, Ministry of Defense, which are responsible for performing cyber attacks, propaganda oriented actions and interest inserting malware in the uh, command and control systems of opponents. Uh, represent a very real and highly serious danger for Georgia and for international community. According to the high-ranking Russian military officials, this information operation units participated in the annual uh, exercises uh, for the first time in September 2016. 
The cyber attacks on the Ukrainian energy system created a sense that in future conflicts, Russia will not limit uh, its activities to simple DDoS or defacement attacks or cyber espionage operations, and that there is no guarantee it will not take action against critical infrastructure, which uh, might be followed by destruction and perhaps even uh, causalities. Information warfare for the Kremlin is a key tool for establishing dominance in the international arena. Informational confrontation against Western soci uh, societies is based up upon the Soviet era tactics of psychological warfare and is one of the main aspects of Russian strategy. Russia uses various tools for information confrontation uh, due to the difficulty of attribution. Russian intelligence services establish highly secretive uh, activists groups or act under the cover of already established ones Hacktivist attacks were one, were one of the components in the cyber attacks supported by the Russian government in 2007 in Estonia, uh, in 2008 in Georgia. They were also heavily involved in the Russia-Ukraine conflict during the events of Maidan or annexation of Crimea. Uh, Hackers group connected with GRU, Russian Military Intelligence Service, was behind the attack on the French TV channel, TV, TV Monde, in April 2015, all, allegedly performed by the Cyber Kalipat associated with Daesh. This action was a typical false flag operation from the side of the Russian Special Services, Special Forces, the same group is responsible for hacking the Twitter account of the United States Central Command. The attack on the French TV channel was well organized and started back in January by sending phishing letters to phishing emails to its employees. Three months later, this enabled the cyber criminals, the Russian cyber actors to gain control of up to 10 informational channels and their social media channels, spread jihadi propaganda and publish the personal data of the French military personnel serving in Syria. Uh, in order to change or manipulate information, Russia widely uses a paid commentator, army, army so-called trolls, and the largest grouping of uh, hired trolls, um, internet research agency uh, or, or trolls from Olgino is a state-founded organization with acts on the Kremlin's orders and mainly publishes pro-government, pro-Kremlin content or engages in online discussions in favor of the Kremlin. The task of the organization is to combat Western influence and media sources that have a negative stance towards Russia. Additionally, the uh, function of some of the trolls is also to spread false content. One of the, one of the means of manipulation for Russia are the numerous internet Ports controlled by the Kremlin, which are essentially applications that automatically spread content through social media. A bot can take unwanted information, make it impossible to access real content, spread a specific message, or undertake other tasks of various difficulty and content. The propaganda content itself represents a mix of false and true information aimed at confusing, demoralizing, and gaining influence over the target audience. The target audience is, first of all, a uh, population of Russia, certain groups within the population of other countries, the internal Russian political elite, or those uh, of the target countries. The channels of spreading propaganda are various, including TV and radio channels, 
bots, and trolls in social media, optimized search engines, private journalists in foreign media, and more. Uh, so the scale of the cyber threats coming from Russia is growing in terms of both complexity as well as variation and informational technical effect uh, oriented cyber attack performed or supported by Russia against Georgia could cause serious damage and even causalties. Whilst the propaganda content spreads through cyber channels could cause the alteration of perceptions in favor of the Kremlin, reduce pro-Western sentiments and form or strengthen the pro-Russian elite. All of which could be a prerequisite to conventional actions. Hence, it's vitally important to focus not only on the network protection operations, but to also integrate cyber capabilities with other military operations. Cyber elements, as the recent events have made clear, uh, hold one of the key roles in hybrid warfare tactics and are used for solving more and more task tasks. It's important to constantly involve cyber elements in military exercises to ensure participation of Georgian structure of the private sector and the academia in international, like, in international exercise NATO and so on. Uh, and an approach must be established that cybersecurity is a shared responsibility and that without effective international or intrastructure interagency cooperation on information exchange, our country cannot play the role of a reliable partner in cyberspace. In this context, the action aimed towards raising the awareness of users are of utmost importance. Uh, despite the fact, fact that the difference between our adversary and us is enormous in terms of military potential, cyberspace is actually a domain where the small country can truly resist uh, a much more powerful aggressor and cyberspace can become a successful element of an asymmetric response to threatening actions or a sort of ongoing front of resistance. Uh, let me shortly in the, at the end discuss uh, our new cyber security strategy and main directions of cyber defense against Russian threats cyber threats. Given the ever-changing nature of cyberspace, it's vitally important uh, to clearly underline the problems accompanying the development of the cyber dimensions of Georgia. Uh, first of all, the paradigm for the determination of critical infrastructure must be uh, reviewed. In a democratic state, the majority of critically important services are located in the private sector and like banking sector, energy sector, and so on. And consequently, according to best practices, the private sector represents much of the critical infrastructure. This field includes energy, uh, water supply, banking and financial sector, the food, uh, chemical and military industries, medical segment, and others. According to the current uh, legislation, current Georgia legislation, critical infrastructure covers only a part of state networks and does not extend over the business fields critically important for the state. Uh, this is to change because uh, cyber attack against the business, against the critical infrastructure in business field is very crucial for Georgia and for, uh, for other countries. Despite more or less developed mechanisms of network defense, 
there is a risk of hostile state accessing the industry control systems remotely through hacking and planting compromised software uh, through supply chain operation. The management of supply chain risks must be integrated into the procurement process or risk management system in order to ensure the security and reliability of equipment and technologies used by the state sector. Uh, for Georgia, for example, the prohibition must be instituted on buying Russian-made or Russian-imported information technologies uh, or software or hardware or services. Uh, next, very important uh, point is insider threat. The private sector is often a provider of critical services and hence data of the state sector often end up in the hands of contractors, which increases the scale of insider threats. Businesses by their nature uh, are oriented on getting uh, maximum profits with minimum expenditure and hence they avoid additional expenses for security, especially for cyber, for, for cyber security. It's necessary to strictly define standards for protecting data that will be obligatory for contractors to meet in order to participate in the state acquisitions process. In addition, the state must help private companies and contractors to process important information in an acceptable level of cybersecurity. Another vital topic is the proper perception of cybersecurity problems by the top managers in the state and private sectors. The level of perception that allows for the use of uh, Russian antivirus programs and email providers by state structures remains and uh, remains an unfortunate reality. Such cases are not at all rare, uh, unfortunately. And uh, let us remember that due to cyber risks like data collection, uh, tracking, uh, espionage, the Lithuanian authority recommended that public servants do not use the services, for example, Yandex Taxi or uh, mile servers like Yandex Ru, etc. It's necessary to formulate a complex of measures for rising cybersecurity awareness with and implement it on all levels of state governance. It's necessary to identify the structures responsible for preventing the psychological effects of Russian cyber operations in the cybersecurity architecture, as well as defining their roles. Uh, for example, study the sources of threats and organize events for informing target groups about possible threats and destructive actors. Therefore, in terms of the new national strategy, it's necessary to move cybersecurity to a higher level and integrate cybersecurity requirements into various fields of the uh, state life. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end uh, on an optimistic note, uh, 15 years ago, Kremlin banned, banned Georgian wine for political reason. This was a hybrid activity, economical blockade, uh, and this action led Georgian winemakers to improve their wine quality to reach world's markets, European markets or United States markets and so on. And the same here, after Russian cyber attacks, we have to improve our cyber defense and we will do it. And I do not hope that Vladimir Vladimirovich will remember Mephistopheles, that I am part of that power, which eternally will evil and eternally works good. However, I believe that this, this cyber attacks can improve our resilience 
and quality of our cyber defense. Thank you very much for your attention and I am ready for your question. Thank you once again for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Mr. Godice, Godice, sorry. Um, this was really an extremely insightful presentation. I think we all learned a lot and I cannot wait to get hands on your presentation and to distribute it. I already took quite some screenshots and I'm looking forward to sharing this knowledge. Um, from our side, quite a few questions uh, arise already. Um, I will just jump right into the first question by um, Ms. Galumovi. Um, Ms. Galumovi asked it, do we have the right data governance strategy to minimize cyber risk? Ah, yes. Um, as mentioned, we are working on the third generation of our national cyber strategy. And uh, I hope this will last only a few months and our, now, uh, our new cyber strategy will be in action. This strategy we are developed with our uh, Brit, uh, colleagues from the United Kingdom, from, from the UK and from US. And this strategy is more oriented on cyber defense. Uh, you know, Georgia is not a big country, not a big power, and the military response against cyber attacks from Russia is uh, not for Georgia because we don't have great military power like uh, European countries like US and so on. And the attribution uh, of cyber attacks uh, is uh, very uh, difficult to, uh, to develop military response against this cyber defense. Our um, strategy in cyber uh, field is more defense oriented, but very important uh, goals, topics are public awareness rising, international cooperation, especially in terms of information sharing uh, about malware. And we are integrate as a non uh, partner country, non-member country of NATO. We are integrate in malware information sharing platform by NATO smart defense program. And we are sharing information about Russian malware, Russian cyber operation with uh, about uh, 28 or so countries, European countries, member countries. Also as a non-member country, we are participating uh, in NATO um, exercises in Tallinn, uh, like Look Shields uh, and Cyber Coalition. This is uh, a NATO exercise as well. And uh, for us, this is very important and very uh, huge experience to fight uh, shoulder uh, with shoulder with our uh, Western partners. Yes, exactly. Thank you for, so much for this response. Maybe to give like a bit of a background, the NATO Lock Shield exercise just came to an end this year. It is headed by the headed by the NATO Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in uh, Tallinn. Yes. And it combines a lot of blue and red teams from all of the different NATO uh, countries in a simulation exercise, a very exciting event. Um, there are a lot of news on that online right now. Um, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Galumovi, for this question. Maybe let's directly connect it really briefly. I forgot to say we have half an hour left for questions and answers, so please do not hesitate to come forward. So let's connect this question directly to the question of Fiona, who asked it. Could you please explain what is the Jordan attribution policy of cyber operations if there is one defined? I think this fits very well. Yes, 
Thank you very much, Fiona, for this great question. You know that attribution is a very weak position in, interna in the international law, but, but for attribution, we are uh, using international experience like uh, the most malwares used by Russia cyber actors and, and trademark trademark and the technical evidences we um, uh, are coming from our Western partners like US and like the United Kingdom. Uh, once again, our uh, response is only diplomatical and uh, uh, defense oriented response like new sanctions against Russia, like uh, like uh, diplomatical activities, but also awareness raising and strength capacity building to defend our critical infrastructure. Um, by the way, Georgia has a very much new projects with our international partners and uh, we extended that our cyber defense capabilities will increase in next three or four years during next three or four years uh, especially uh, especially um, uh, important for us are the uh, tabletop exercises for top managements to increase awareness but also technical exercises with uh, Western countries uh, in real time exercises like NATO exercises or exercises with US partners, US National Guards and NSA. Perfect, thank you so much. Yona, I hope this answered your question. Two questions by uh, Robert. First one, as Tbilisi uh, looks to digitalize its financial sector and many engage in fintech activities like crypto mining throughout the country, what measures can Georgia take to securitize its financial sector against cybersecurity attacks uh, in brackets from Russia? So, uh, very actual uh, question. <laughs> Because, because this field is very important for Georgia. But uh, the banking sector in Georgia is most developed uh, sector in terms of cybersecurity also. Because why? Because cybersecurity is, you know, very expensive. Uh, so very expensive field and the banking sector has more uh, financial, uh, so financial, uh, more, more finances, and the, uh, they have quite good uh, uh, teams, CERTs, computer emergency response teams, and they are in good cooperating uh, terms with uh, our uh, uh, security sector, uh, state sector. Uh, we develop uh, uh, one project uh, also known as uh, Cyber Reserve Project and uh, we are trying to integrate uh, good guys, uh, so young people from private sector in uh, security sectors certs uh, for time to time, like Estonian Cyber Reserve or Estonian Defense League. And uh, they make uh, together exercises with our special services. They have uh, permission to their exercises with, uh, for example, with SANS Institute, with Carnegie Mellon, uh, and so on and so on. And banking sector is one of the good uh, defended sector for Georgia's economy. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for this response. Maybe a very 
um, helpful uh, thing to look at would be the financial ISEC, uh, the Cybersecurity Corporation for Finances. And I think um, in the financial sector, a very strong point is also the whole SWIFT system. So maybe this would be a good point to look up after this presentation as well. Um, so Robert posed another question asking, would you consider crypto mining activities in Georgia and the unrecognized territories of Abkhazia and Ossetia as a possible cyber threat? And if so, how serious is this threat? Yes, Robert, thank you very much. Uh, it's very important for us, this, this unrecognized territories are threats not only for Georgia, but for whole world. Uh, the crypto mining itself uh, is not a problem in terms of cybersecurity, but the problem is that this uh, money is for terroristic organizations and for 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 uh, criminal uh, for uh, financial financing criminal and terroristic organizations and this is exactly the problem uh, otherwise crypto mining for georgia is not the first problem for us Okay, uh, Robert, I hope this answered your question. Please let us know if not. Um, but I think it was quite a complete response. Ismail, hello Ismail, nice to have you here today. Thank you for your questions, for your three questions. So Ismail asked it. Um, Gamajava, Andrea, thank you for your presentation. I have three questions. During last year's war in the Caucasus, Russian cyber interference was quite weak compared to Georgia and Ukraine. In fact, nothing but spreading disinformation was used. One, what do you think is the reason of such a weak re reaction? Two, can we say that Russia faced some kind of resistance that prevented its plans? And three, how do you generally assess the cybersecurity policy of Azerbaijan? So maybe let's first start with the reason for such a weak reaction. So, uh, uh, very kind of Ismail to create in Georgian. So Gamar Joba is greeting in Georgian. So uh, thank you very much for this uh, good question. First of all, I think this weak, uh, uh, this weak cyber operation against Georgia in, in Caucasus was maybe intelligence by war uh, tactic uh, of Russian intelligence services, which means scanning the weaknesses or uh, scanning the defenses of Georgian side. And, uh, another part is that the influence operations and disinformation uh, had no technical effect, but is very dangerous because it caused um, uh, uh, altering of perception, strengthening of pro-Russian elites. And this is dangerous because uh, uh, it uh, can cause uh, conventional attacks and conventional activities from Russian side. The second question is that the, um, I think I, I think Georgia is uh, most advanced to compare with 2008, but but we are much dependent on cyber technologies and. Uh, the uh, cyber attack will be uh, more dangerous for Georgia than for, Azer for Azerbaijan also than in 2008, because in 2008, uh, as mentioned, we have only seven on, or eight active internet user per 100 citizen, and nobody knows that this attack uh, is so so dangerous for us. Today is the, another situation, and today we must uh, we have to carry about our cybersecurity. And the last, uh, what was? How do you generally assess the cybersecurity policy of Azerbaijan? I only 
know that the uh, cyber operations uh, were the important part of Azerbaijani uh, of conflicts in uh, Karabakh. And uh, I know my good colleagues in Azerbaijan in the direction of cybersecurity, and they are very advanced people and very uh, so aware people about our situation, about situation in cybersecurity. I uh, will be uh, very great, uh, grateful if our contacts with Azerbaijan Ministry of Defense or Azerbaijani cyber people will be increased. So. Wonderful, thank you so much. I realized I uh, overlooked one question uh, by Kaka. Um, a more basic question, but actually I very much like this question. It's an introductory question. What are black, white, and gray hat hackers and which was used, which were used in Georgia? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I can say that the better cyber defense is the active, active defense measures are uh, very important for uh, each country. In Georgia, we do not have white, white head hackers, but we have legal organizations in our special services at our MOD, and uh, they have uh, they have learned cybersecurity, uh, defense, or uh, active cybersecurity as well in uh, very uh, authoritative organizations in the US, in the UK. Um, and this is for us very important to share our experience, par, but we have very much to learn from our colleagues. Uh, wonderful, thank you so much. Um, good, then let's come to the next question by Monica. So Monica asked it. Thank you so much for this comprehensive presentation, Mr. Gutzirice. I have one question regarding the strategic communications policy of the uh, Jordan government. Does the Georgian cybersecurity strategy have a place for strategic communications? i.e. making the Georgian public aware of the cyber threat from hostile foreign actors. Yes, uh, uh, strategic communication is the one of the part of our foreign policy. Uh, we are not member, but we cooperate very uh, good. Uh, we very good with the center of excellence in cyber, uh, in, in strategic communication field. And we have uh, strategic communication units at the all governmental levels under prime minister and in, uh, in the ministries. And uh, we have uh, strategic communication strategy, but it's separate from cybersecurity strategy. Uh, cyber is an important part of strategic communication, but we have separate these two directions. I don't know if it's uh, good or bad, but we have our specific and uh, but in field of strategic communication, we also are in communication with our Western partners and with NATO Excellence Center. Uh, maybe it's in Riga or in Vilnius, I don't know exactly. Wonderful, thank you so much. And I think it's especially interesting for us as, uh, as security students, most of us, I guess um, from from the names that I see in the chat, welcome to everybody else, obviously, um, to hear about your close connection to the NATO countries as well and to the international cooperation on this subject. Um, Monica, I hope this answered your question. I don't see any more questions for the moment, so I will post one that I had personally in mind. 
So we, you were talking about calling private actors to more responsibilities, especially concerning the supply chain, so supply chain tax. Um, and now my question is, how exactly could one actually um, realize uh, this? So how could one call um, private sector actors to more legal responsibility, especially if they are outside of your own country? I know that the um, United States just uh, developed and published and started to conduct their CMMC, it's the Cybersecurity Maturity Model, Maturity Model. Um, and it's a huge amount of work because you try to verify each defense contractor throughout the whole supply chain. So uh, what exactly is the approach that Georgia is planning to take up here and how realistic is it either way to, to call each of those tiers throughout the supply chain to transparency and responsibility and therefore security? Yes. Uh very good question and very difficult to answer because you you are right so it's very difficult and most difficult it is for a small country like georgia because we don't have our production in uh, products in software or hardware and uh, we buy this software and hardware through offices they are in Russia or in Central Asia, uh, even for HP or for Sony, we can buy these products in Russia representative offices. So we are not a big mar market for these uh, giant companies, you know, and um, uh, we are democratic state and we cannot prohibit uh, business activities. With Russia, but but uh, very important is first of all awareness rising to not use the Russian products and the second uh, right standards perfect standards like NIST like ISO standards and um, good cooperation with private sector and public private partnership uh, for for strengthens um, uh, cyber capabilities, but also uh, top managers' awareness uh, to ban or to uh, to be more uh, to 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 be more uh, serious with Russian products uh, because this is very important. Uh, and very uh, dangerous threats for Georgia's uh, industry control systems, for SCADA systems, but also for cyber espionage, because uh, a big amount of Georgian public servants use this, for example, mail rule, not for uh, business uh, mails, but for uh, personal mails, for personal uh, relations and it is very, especially in this uh, COVID era, because uh, the big amount of people, employees are at distance uh, learning or distance working, and this uh, increased the threats from Russia's malware and Russia supply chain threats. Yes, I think we all got uh, very much aware about uh, of the cybersecurity vulnerabilities caused by COVID and caused by everybody rapidly digitalizing uh, within a few months. So yes, definitely agreed. Um, well, if there are no no further questions, and I I don't see any more, I hope we satisfied everybody's uh, earn for knowledge and uh your knowledge and um mr good thank you so much for being here today with us thank you so much for spending your time uh with us in this chat and preparing this presentation it was as i said extremely insightful we for everybody in the chat we um recorded the session it will be up on youtube within a few days and we will share it obviously with your um with your okay, Mr. Gutierrez. 
Um, for now, I wish everybody a wonderful and excellent start into the week. It's the end of the semester, so I guess everybody is very excited about their exams and very uh, busy. Uh, nonetheless, keep your eyes open. The CSA is a workshop series coming up for the end of the year, such as, or so to say, a little burnout session, how to best uh, do cybersecurity consulting, how to best do open source intelligence, how to, um, yeah, a lot of knowledge going on on cyber espionage, all of that. So keep your eyes open. The workshops are coming up and they're very limited in the number of participants, so be quick. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for being here today, and I wish you a wonderful end of the day. Thank you again, Mr. Gozirice, and Thank see you, you very you. much. Thank you very much. This was a great opportunity for us, a great audience, and thank you very much once again for this opportunity. Thank you. Au revoir, everybody. Bye.